Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 5 best skirmisher civilizations in Age of Empires 2. So if you really like the skirmisher and you want to shut down all kinds of archer and cab archer situations and civilizations, then this is the video for you. I'm going to go ahead and run through the best skirmisher civilizations the game has to offer. Starting off at number 5, we've got the Turks. Just kidding. The Turks have terrible skirmishes, I'm sure you guys knew that. Starting off at number 5 for real though, we've got the Koreans and a tie here, the Byzantines. These two civilizations are really solid with the skirmishers because of the discount that they get. Now the discount is very similar on both ends, so I really couldn't decide which one is better than the other, but I would say that the Koreans is slightly slightly better because they also get the free armor upgrades on their skirms. Now both of these civs get fully upgraded generic skirmishers with no extra bonus making the skirm strong stronger, but the Koreans will actually get a 50% wood discount on their skirmishers, and the Byzantines will get a 25% discount on food and wood, so on the entire skirm, making for a very similar price between them. Koreans saving a little bit more though, because the wood cost is a bit higher for the skirm. Koreans though, on top of the Byzantine, also get extra armor from the blacksmith for free, so free armor from start to finish, feudal age, tin and feudal age, all three upgrades coming in for free and instantly, so if I had to pick between them, the Koreans would definitely be a little bit better, but Byzantine is definitely right right up in there with the Koreans as a number five best skirm sieve in the game. Honestly, you could rank them a little bit higher as well because the discount will apply from the start of the game, but I really felt like for the skirmisher, because it's usually a late game trash unit as well as an early game unit that's kind of applied to everything, I felt like having upgrades that make the skirmisher better helps a lot for the late game, which is where the skirmisher is going to really be spammed out. So for this video, I prioritized more civilizations or upgrades that actually buff the skirmisher and make it perform better over a civilization that has a discount on it to make it a bit more pop efficient for that late game. So that's why I kept Byzantines and Koreans at number five. Moving on to number four, we've got the Aztecs. Now the Aztecs get the skirmishers that are produced a little bit faster due to their generic, all military units are produced 15% faster bonus, but the Aztecs also get a really strong technology on their skirmishers. The Estlatl upgrade in the Castle Age gives their skirmishers plus one attack and plus one range. Having extra range and extra attack is basically the two best stats that you can have on a skirmisher. The extra plus one attack is actually huge because it lets it do two damage against any Hassar units or any unit with generic two pierce armor, which is a huge buff to the skirmisher's attack, basically doubling its damage output compared to a generic skirmisher against two pierce armor units, which is why the Aztec skirmishers are a very solid backline unit even in the late game. It makes it even comparable to a gold unit as far as how effective it is at putting out that damage because it's going to be countering all kinds of archer units and also doing decent against some kind of cavalry and other infantry melee units. On top of that though, the plus one range makes it very unfair in certain situations allowing you to outrange enemy arbalest enemy skirmishers and just be able to take some fights that you'd otherwise not be able to take with generic skirmishers extra range and range units is absolutely massive and we know how strong that could be and for the aztecs combining that with a plus one attack just makes the skirmishers very hard to deal with and very very strong Moving on to number three, we've got the Lithuanians. Now, Lithuanians get a little bit of a double bonus going on for the skirmishers. They have number one, faster moving skirmishers, which is probably the most oppressive bonus you can have in the early game. Faster moving skirmishers means that if you have even a small numbers advantage, like two or three extra skirms, your opponent has, let's say, eight, and you have, let's say, ten, you're going to be able to chase down your opponent's skirms and kill them all before he's able to run back to safety. This is unique to the Lithuanians. In any other situation, a generic sieve has ten skirms versus a another generic sieve with eight skirms, you can kill one or two, but then the eight skirm player will be able to run away in time. You'll lose a, you know, a couple skirms, but nothing too major. Whereas the Lithuanians can actively chase down enemy skirms and take repeated good trade after good trade. And it ends up being very oppressive and hard to deal with. But this is not the only thing that the Lithuanians get for their skirmishers. They also get a nice unique technology available in the Imperial Age called Tower Shields, which gives the skirmishers an extra two pierce armor. On a unit that already has eight pierce armor, giving it an extra two pierce armor puts it at 10 pierce armor. You know what that means? That means that a generic heavy cab watcher will deal one damage to a skirmisher from Lithuanians with this upgrade. And so getting a 10 pierce armor skirmisher on the field basically makes it stronger at what it's already good at 
which can be incredibly strong in the right circumstances. Now, generally speaking, in Age of Empires, making a unit stronger at what it's already good at can lead to certain units being broken. But in this case, I wouldn't say that the Skirmisher from Lithuanians is broken, because at the end of the day, the Skirmishers are quite limited in their capacity to take out melee units and take out cavalry. And so they're just going to be really strong in certain matchups, like for example, against Britons that have longbowmen that usually have extra damage. But in this case, that damage was reduced to only one against Skirmishers. And so with the fast moving and the really tanky Skirmishers, you can absolutely dog these archers if just run at them, just constantly chase them like a rabid dog and don't let them get a second to breathe. Skirmisher after skirmisher, you're just taking good trade after good trade against their archers. And of course, we don't cost gold. Our skirmishers are of food and wood. So long term, our trades are going to be so effective against those archer sieves. Moving on to number two, we've got a civilization that basically thrives with its skirmishers. Its entire identity is its skirmishers, because quite frankly, they don't have a lot else going for them. We've got the Dravidians at number two. Now, the Dravidians have some really nice bonuses geared towards their skirmishers, but the main one and basically the only direct buff to the skirmisher is that the skirmisher will attack 25% faster. There's a very significant attack speed buff for the skirmisher, and this applies from the start of the game. This is very helpful because it basically gives you a skirmisher that beats all other skirmishers and a skirmisher that can kite very effectively against knights in the early game as well if you're able to find the knight with only plus one armor and you have a lead skirmisher you can actually kite quite effectively against the knight because of how fast you fire it's very similar to a lithuanian bonus where you're able to run a bit faster create that distance and shoot dravidians can create that distance and shoot more often and much more quickly and so you're just getting a higher damage output and in general higher dps on a range unit is amazing sign me up and aside from that dravidians just get fully upgraded skirmishers and they also get extra wood when aging up to feudal age to castle age etc makes it very easy to get into skirmishers like that 200 wood basically pays for your range in your first skirm and it basically pays for your elite skirm upgrade in castle age making the skirm play with dravidians just silky silky smooth and very easy to get into i also really like that dravidians basically win any skirm battle in the early game because the faster firing skirmisher lets you apply that extra bonus damage that you get skirmisher on skirmisher 25 percent more basically in a fight and that is usually enough damage output to win you out skirm versus skirm versus any sieve. Before I show you guys the number one best skirm sieve in the game, which is probably painfully obvious at this point, if, if you can't guess it, you gotta take another tech tree class or something. You gotta you gotta rethink your AOE to knowledge, but I don't wanna shame anyone. It could be possible that you're a new viewer and it's still a little bit of a secret, so stay tuned. We're gonna run through some honorable mentions first. Uh, we got the Britons and the Mayans to talk about here for the honorable mention. The Britons get plus one extra range through their yeoman technology for their skirmishers, but it's really just not that good because it's only plus one range. The Aztecs get plus one range and plus one attack. Attack. Yes, the Aztecs lack the last armor, so you could make an argument there for Britons being a little bit better in that respect. But I do think that the plus one attack that the Aztecs get is better than the only the plus one range that the Britons get and their extra armor. So I would prefer the Aztecs over the Britons, but the Britons skirms are still very solid in that late game. And also the Mayans, they get their nice little unique tech, the Hulche Javelin Javelineers. Oh, I butchered that one, which gives their skirmishers an extra projectile, which sounds really broken until you realize that the extra projectile only ever does one damage. It doesn't have any bonus damage applied to it so it's really nothing special still worth mentioning though because the extra projectile is a little bit of damage output increase and helps them against high pierce armor targets but it's nothing too special and it's not comparable to some of the other bonuses we have on the table Moving on to number one, the best skirmishers in the game is not even an elite skirmisher, it's actually an imperial skirmisher from the Vietnamese. Now, the really cool part is that the Vietnamese skirms are actually not the best skirms in the game because it, this is a team bonus. So technically speaking, having something like Dravidians or Lithuanians with a Vietnamese ally and getting im skirm is the best skirm in the game and not the Vietnamese one. But for the sake of a 1v1 uh, you know, list, uh, Vietnamese will have the best skirms. I think the Imperial Skirmisher with extra HP from the Vietnamese is by far the best skirmisher in the game. It's not even close even. Uh, you get an extra attack and an extra pierce armor from the Imperial Skirm technology, which is an absolutely massive. Combining that with a plus seven HP for all your skirmishers makes Vietnamese easily the best skirm sieve in late game. And what's also really interesting is that your Vietnamese skirmishers are also benefiting from a plus six HP in the early game from 30 to 36. And then your elite skirms from a plus seven HP bonus from 35 to 42. So definitely a really solid skirmish across the board but especially in late game with imperial skirmishers on the table 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys want more content from me, check out my Patreon for all the guides and exclusive videos and build orders and all the good stuff, really. And if you guys want to check out my live stream, check out my Twitch for all the Road to 3K action and the high-level 1v1 games back-to-back -back with high chat interaction. Links to both in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.